In this video, we'll be exploring the Japanese island of Kyushu in a camper van. We'll start in the middle of the island at the Mount Aso volcano and visit an epic shrine in the Japanese forest. Then we'll head south to Kagoshima, where we camp out next to a waterfall and show you what living in a small Japanese camper van is all about. So we made it to our first stop here in Kyushu. We're at the Daikanvo Lookout. Yeah, and what an amazing place it is, especially for our first stop. There's just so much to see out here, and it's a great place to get a view of the entire island and to see what's out here. We got valleys, mountains, canyons, canyons, rice fields. There's just so much terrain here. Wow, that was an amazing time. We thought we would be here for maybe like 10 minutes. So we spent about an hour here. Yeah, at least an hour. So welcome to our new home. It's a little late and it's a little too dark, so we'll give you a full tour later, but this is where we're sleeping tonight. It's gonna be pretty tight. I'm a little nervous, but I think it'll be okay. I think we'll be quite comfortable and cozy in here. Good morning, I just woke up. And it's really cold. Didn't sleep too well last night. But we're gonna go catch a sunrise at Komizuka Crater. We'll see you there. So, so far, the best part of van life is being able to enjoy the views from a cozy bed. I chose breakfast today. I found this bread yesterday at the store. How do you like their breakfast? It tastes like bread. Can't complain too much about it. <laughs> the bread didn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> So we're trying to go and see this volcanic crater today, but unfortunately the road is closed. If you look up towards the mountain, you'll see that there's a huge cloud of gas just coming off. That's nature, it happens sometimes, so maybe we'll come back next time and have better luck to go and see the caldera. As luck would have it, right as we were getting ready to leave, the park rangers opened the gate to the volcano. Looks like we'd be seeing the crater today after all. Yeah, we get to go see the caldera. So the park rangers opened the gate for us and we've been let in. We're gonna go see the caldera right now. I keep calling it a caldera. It's actually a crater though, right? Yeah, it's a crater yeah. and it's freezing. Yeah, it's freezing. It I is am... so windy up here. <laughs> Ooh, it's really stinky. It actually wakes up the senses in the morning, that smell. Yeah. Do you like it? I'm, I'm kind of enjoying the Honestly, stinky sulfur smell. it's triggering me from my own scent experience where I had a gnarly <laughs> headache, so I don't know how long I'm gonna last. I'm not ready, but let's go check it out. Now I know why they say that you can't come up here if you have like breathing issues or asthma or anything like that. This smoke is just threatening to just come and waft right into our face at any minute. If the wind direction changes and it just starts cutting this way, we're just gonna get engulfed in smoke. And they also have those refuge areas. If the smoke does start coming here, then you can just go run into and hide in one of those refuge areas. Just a short drive away from Mount Aso's fiery crater, the terrain completely changes into a more peaceful landscape. The Kamishikimi Kumanoimasu Shrine is a steeply pathed shrine with steps that climb up the side of the mountain. Oh, and it has a surprise at the end. 
it's, it's beautiful out here. There's just moss growing all over everything, tall trees, and just a cool breeze coming off the mountain. It's such a beautiful place to be in. So we just saw that there's like a cave up here. This is not something I saw in any of the guidebooks. So we're gonna go check it out. We have to check it out. Really excited to check out this cave. Wow, look at this. That's so cool. It's super beautiful up here. There's this really nice cave and then Inside the cave, there's these little caverns with a bunch of plants. Good morning from our camper van. We slept here in front of a waterfall last night. Can you believe that? It's so cool. Our friend Rub's Adventures showed us this spot. He's camped here a few times. There's no one here. We're super stoked. Oh no, we bought creamer instead of coffee. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Struggles of not knowing the local language. <laughs> Shucks. Now finally, what you've all been waiting for. Epic van tour. So this is where we've been sleeping for the past few nights. So this van pretty much has everything you need. It has lots of storage space. Check out our pantry and all these drawers above. We were able to take all the interior items of our luggage and sort it throughout all the storage here. Another great feature is there's these beautiful curtains all along the bedside. So it covers the front and the sides and the back window so you have some privacy when you sleep. Let's talk about the bed. The bed is quite cozy. Me and Trey were very, very comfortable sleeping here, but it's definitely not for everyone. The bottom half here is like a twin size bed, and then up here is like a full size. If you are over 5'10", this is not your bed. Um, unless you're okay with sleeping with your legs folded and you're sleeping by yourself. Otherwise, it's quite cozy and maybe a little too small for you. They did give us pillows and a blanket. They gave us this blanket when we arrived, which is really nice, but not enough for two people. We were freezing our first night. We slept at Mount Also. It was like 52 degrees at night. It was so cold, so we went and bought a new blanket at Don Quixote for 20 bucks. We have these nice drawers here. We've been putting our water. And then they also gave us this wonderful stove top. And this table here can be removed and put right here so we can sit and do work while like looking at a view or something. We also have a shower here. Since we've been in the van, we have not showered. It's been maybe two days, two and a half days, no shower. Being on the road, power is super important. So here's our control systems. You can control the lights, the water. It also has two USB plugs. We also have these, which is a higher voltage power supply. So you could plug in your laptops and even a hair dryer. We have lights here and they could be blue or really bright yellow, which is nice. Now let's show you the front of the van. Now for the reality of having a small camper van. When we sleep at night, we have to move everything into the front seat. So you see we have our backpacks here, and when we get ready to drive and move around during the day, we have to take all this stuff out of the front, put it into the back. So things get a little bit messy, disorganized, but that's the reality of having a small camper van. So if you guys would like to book a camper van here in Japan, I recommend Samurai Campers. That's who we rented this van from at SamuraiCampers.com. Super fast, super efficient. They speak English really well. They have a fleet of different size vans and they have offices in Tokyo and Fukuoka. So you have two different pickup locations if you want. Next time on Chloe and Trey. We explore Kyushu's lost coast where most travelers don't dare to venture. We also venture to Japan's most beautiful waterfall and stumble upon the most epic campsite. 
This is one adventure you don't want to miss, so don't forget to subscribe. It's dinner time in our new home, and we just got some food from the grocery store in 7-Eleven. We got this lemon-flavored chicken stick at 7-Eleven. Salty lemon. Excited yeah. to try it. Mm -hmm. It was about 189 yen, and then this futamaki sushi.